hello everyone welcome back to my channel so in this from this video we are going to start a new concept called complex numbers okay complex numbers for engineering mathematics okay so as a starting video we are learn we are going to learn about the basics of complex number and complex function okay second so what is an analytic function and how to find whether the given function is an analytic or not analytic or not using cauchy riemann equations okay so all this concept we'll learn here and we'll solve some problems in the upcoming videos right so what is a complex number complex number consists of both real part plus i into imaginary part so it has it is a combination of both real part and imaginary part so in cartesian form it is represented by z is equal to x plus i y okay so z is called as complex number complex number or complex variable we can call it as complex variable right x is real part of z real part of z and y is imaginary part of z okay imaginary part of z right so i square is equal to minus 1 that is i is equal to root of minus 1 this is the value of the imaginary value i okay so this is in cartesian form suppose uh, if you want to find the modulus modulus of z that is represented by mod z represented by mod z is root of x square plus y square that is root of real part whole square plus imaginary part whole square okay so real part whole square plus imaginary part whole square will become the modulus of z okay or magnitude we'll call it as magnitude of z okay so if you want to calculate angle of z okay so if you want to calculate angle of z so we'll call that as argument 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 of z so if you want to calculate theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x this is called as argument of z okay theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x that is tan inverse of imaginary part divided by real part right so this is how we are going to have the modulus of z that is magnitude of z and angle of z if you are given with uh, cartesian form right so similarly z in polar form z in polar form is given by z is equal to r into e power i theta this is the complex variable in polar form okay where r is equal to root of x square plus y square and theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x that is this is the angle and this is the magnitude okay so this is the relationship between this is the relationship between cartesian form and polar form so this form is called as cartesian form this form of representing the complex variable z is called as cartesian form that is x plus i y and this form is called as polar form right this form is called polar form and this is the relationship between uh, our conversion between polar form to cartesian form okay so if you want to convert uh, a reverse that is x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta 
okay so if you are given with uh, cartesian coordinates that is if you are given with x and y and you want to find r and theta we can use this formulas that is if you are given with cartesian form in order to convert into polar form you have to use these formulas and if you are given with uh, polar form like this so if you are given with polar form and you want to convert this into cartesian form like this that is you have to find the values of x and y then you can use these formulas okay so this is how we can convert a complex number both in cartesian form to uh, polar form or from polar form to cartesian form okay so next we'll discuss about complex function complex function f of z okay so a function f of z is said to be complex function if it is of the form f of z is equal to u of x comma y plus i into v of x comma y similarly in polar form f of z is equal to u of r comma theta plus i into v of r comma theta okay so u and y are u and y are functions okay so this is real part of f of z and this is imaginary part imaginary part of f of z okay not z i am calling it as f of z that is why it is called as complex function not the complex variable okay so complex function means it should the real part and imaginary part should be the functions of x and y independently okay so similarly in polar form also u of r comma theta and v of r comma theta right suppose for example f of z is equal to x square y minus x y square plus i into x cube y so this is called as a complex function because this is u of x comma y right and this is v of x comma y so such type of functions are called as complex functions okay so similarly f of z is equal to r square cos 2 theta minus 1 plus i into r square sin 2 theta so this is a complex function in polar form so this is u of r comma theta this is v of r comma theta which is imaginary part and this is real part of f of z okay so such type of functions are called as complex functions okay so this f of z is called as complex potential function or simply we'll call it as complex function okay so this u of x comma y is called as velocity potential function real part of f of z is called as velocity potential function and we'll call this as stream function stream function in mathematics we'll call this as velocity potential function and this as stream function and the function f of z complex function f of z is called complex potential function similarly for it is valid for uh, polar form also okay so understood the difference between complex variable and complex function okay right next is uh, uh, what analytic function next is about analytic function so a function f of z is said to be analytic at z naught if f dash of z naught exist and f dash of z exist at every point of z in the neighborhood of z naught in the neighborhood of z naught okay suppose for example if you take uh, f of z is equal to 1 by z okay so what is f uh, about suppose z is equal to 0 so f dash of z is given by minus 1 by z square minus 1 by z square so at uh, 
z is equal to 0 f dash of z naught is not defined is not defined because it is becoming infinity right so when you substitute z is equal to 0 this value will become infinity so f dash of z naught is not defined so f dash of z naught does not exist therefore this is not an analytic function not an analytic function okay suppose if you take f of z is equal to e power z e power z so about uh, or any value you can take any value suppose z is equal to 0 suppose I take the same value z is equal to 0 so what is f dash of z f dash of z is e power z and at z is equal to 0 its value is f dash of uh, 0 value is 1 so it is existing so f dash of z not exist and f dash of z exist at every point of z in the neighborhood of z not so in the neighborhood of z not that is if uh, z not value is 0 in the neighborhood at 1 it is defined right so f dash of 1 is defined so its value is e power 1 it is defined at 2 so f dash of 2 is equal to e power 2 so in the neighborhood of uh, 0 it is defined everywhere therefore f of z is equal to e power z is an analytic function okay is an analytic function so this type of points where f dash of z naught does not exist are called as singular points singular points that is f dash of z naught does not exist if f dash of z naught does not exist then uh, that point is called as singular point and in this special case is if uh, f dash of z exist for neighborhood of z naught that is in the neighborhood points it exists but does not exist but does not exist at z is equal to z naught then it is called as isolated singular point isolated singular point okay so in the above example suppose I'll take f dash of z is equal to minus 1 by z square z is equal to z naught is equal to 0 I'm taking so it is defined z it is it is defined at z naught is equal to 1 because its value is mi minus 1 by 1 so its value is minus 1 right it is defined at z naught is equal to 2 so it will be minus 1 by 4 some value you are getting but it is not defining only at z is equal to 0 therefore z is equal to 0 is isolated singular point isolated singular point okay from this concept if f dash of z z exist for neighborhood it is existing for neighborhood but it is not defining at z is equal to 0 it is not defining at z is equal to 0 therefore z is equal to 0 is an isolated singular point okay so this is the concept of singular point and isolated singular point and this is what analytic function is with example okay so if a given function f of z is analytic at every point at every point z on the complex plane then such type of functions are called as entire functions okay so if f of z is analytic f of z is analytic at every point at every point so if f of z is analytic at every point on complex plane then such type of functions are called as entire functions or it is also called as integral functions integral function okay so I forgot to tell you one more important point analytic functions are also called regular or holomorphic functions analytic functions are also called as regular or holomorphic functions entire function is also called integral function so examples of entire function that is if you have seen uh, these functions these important functions anywhere you can uh, tell that they are analytic okay examples are e power z sin z cos z sin hz 
cos hz and a naught plus a one z plus a two z square plus so on plus a n z power and that is polynomial polynomial in z so all these are entire functions all these are examples of entire functions that is they are analytic at every point on the complex plane okay z is a complex plane so it, th these functions are analytic at every point what are they e power z sin z cos z sin hz cos hz and polynomial in z all these functions are entire functions that is they are analytic at each and every point on the complex plane okay so this is the concept of analytic function so let me take one more slide and i'll explain you uh, how to find the analytic analyticity if a function is given for you if a complex function is given for you how to find the analyticity practically by using cauchy riemann equations okay right next we'll discuss about cauchy riemann equations cauchy riemann equations okay so why this cauchy riemann equations are used they are used to test the analyticity of complex function f of z of complex function f of z okay so if f of z is given for you f of z is equal to something u of uh, uh, x comma y plus i into v of x comma y so if a complex function is given for you like this and you are asked to find the whether the given function is analytic or not so you can find this analyticity that is if they it is analytic or not of this a function f of z by using cauchy riemann equations okay so that is why they are used right so we have uh, two forms again so if uh, the complex function is of uh, cartesian form and if the complex function is of polar form u of r comma theta plus i into v of r comma theta okay so the necessary condition so what, what are cauchy riemann equation is first of all do u by do x do u by do y sorry do u by do y similarly do v by do x and do v by do y all must be all must exist and continuous okay all must exist and continuous in neighborhood of z neighborhood of z okay so do u by do x must exist and do u by do y all these must exist and must be continuous that is all values must not be infinity so it should they all these values should not be infinity they should have some finite value okay it may be zero as well right so second is the important one the cauchy riemann equation is given by ux is equal to vy and vx is equal to minus uy okay so these two equations are called as cauchy riemann equations for cartesian form that is do u by do x is equal to do v by do y do v by do x is equal to minus do u by do y okay so these two equations are called cauchy riemann equations for cartesian form so if these conditions are satisfied if these two conditions are satisfied even if one of the condition is not satisfied then also the function is said to be not analytic both conditions must be satisfied both must be satisfied for a function to be analytic so then only we can say that f of z is analytic function 
if both conditions are satisfied if only one of the condition is satisfied and other is not satisfied then we can say that it is not analytic okay so if both conditions are satisfied then f dash of z exists okay so that is what the concept of analyticity is so both conditions are satisfied then f dash of z exists which is given by f dash of z is equal to ux plus i into vx so this is the formula ux plus i into vx if these conditions are satisfied then f dash of z exists and that f dash of z is given by the formula ux plus i into vx that is do u by do x plus i into do v by do x okay so these are the formulas which you have to remember in cartesian form similarly in polar form same do u by do r do u by do theta do v by do r comma do v by do theta all must exist and continuous okay and the cauchy riemann equations are given by u r is equal to 1 by r v theta and v r is equal to minus 1 by r u theta these are very important formula okay so here these are important that means do u by do r is equal to 1 by r into do v by do theta similarly do v by do r is equal to minus 1 by r into do u by do theta okay so these two are called as cauchy riemann equations for a function to be analytic that is a function f of z is said to be analytic function if both conditions are satisfied both should be satisfied even if one of the condition is not satisfied then it is said to be not an analytic function okay so if uh, both the conditions are satisfied then f dash of z exists f dash of z exists which is given by the formula f dash of z is equal to u r plus i into v r into e power minus i theta this is the formula for f dash of z okay so this exists only if the function is analytic and to test the analyticity these two conditions must be satisfied okay so this is about cauchy riemann equations so we'll solve some problems in the next video so that you'll understand very clearly about these cauchy riemann equations and analyticity concept okay